With bipolar, life has two speeds. One minute it's all too fast. The next, everything becomes so slow that I find it really hard to cope. I'm Adam Deacon. In 2012, I won the BAFTA. Thank you so much. And thank you to the general public. Thank you. But after that, it all fell apart. Arrests, court appearances, and being sectioned under the Mental Health Act. It's a year since I got diagnosed with bipolar. And I think I'm still on a journey to learn more about it. Look at the remarkable people in our history who have had this condition. Look mm. at what they've achieved and, and be confident that it is not a death sentence. Most of all, I want to know if I can get my life back. Getting diagnosed was a big shock to me. I've got so many questions. So I'm meeting psychologist Carol Chapman. It's just kind of learning more about what bipolar is. And I mm. wondered if you could explain a little more about what that, what that means. Yeah, well, a lot of us, all of us have moods. You know, sometimes we're feeling happy up and up. Sometimes we're feeling down, sad, angry. A sufferer from bipolar will have extremes of mood lasting sometimes days, sometimes weeks. So the mania is um, high energy levels, everything happening very quickly, wanting to do lots. The depressive end, the opposite. Lacking, person lacking in energy, finding it hard to get out of bed, finding it hard to achieve anything, feeling very, very low in mood and hopeless. It used to be called manic depression. And when I've looked online, one celebrity keeps cropping up. Coincidentally, he presents the BAFTA Awards. Stephen Fry agreed to have a chat with me about his experience. You had quite a, a public yes a public I, breakdown I, yourself. I, I did, I, and and I suppose it all started for me. Look at all my school reports. This is unbelievably disruptive, ebullient, annoying tit who just couldn't <laughs> stop speaking, and that was bad and disruptive. And I got expelled from this school and that school and the other school, and then I did eventually go to prison for you know, complicated reasons that I've written about. And then I thought everything was fine. I kind of got over it in my early twenties, and that's really when it all started to go wrong. I realized that I was somehow prey to these terrible moods. And so when it came to this period when I, I was in a play and I zooped you off to, out, yeah, right? I walked yeah. out and yeah. had a kind of collapse of confidence and of, uh, and of happiness and of general feeling that mm. my life was kind mm. of over, got the proper diagnosis then. Mm. And that's when I thought everything was okay because I'd named the beast, mm. I'd s faced it. I was kidding myself. Really? Yeah, that, uh, that, the, the much worse suicide attempt came, came several years after that. And right. you know, I was lying in a hospital bed um, thinking, you know, I am a lunatic. I'm not a sane person. Roughly one in a hundred adults in the UK are diagnosed with bipolar at some point in their life. It costs the NHS an estimated £342 million a year. Some experts say it's associated with creativity. Artists like Van Gogh are said to have lived with bipolar. But that's not the whole story. This isn't some, some sort of almost a blessing that artistic mm. people get mm. that makes them more creative. This is something that is suffered by people who work in shops and of in course. offices and call centres yeah. and welding yeah. shops and you know. Like something happens for it, for it to be triggered. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Life, innit? Yeah. yeah. It's just life. Like. Yeah. We're out and about filming and people keep coming up to me to talk about their own stories. Adele works in a shop in London. She has bipolar and psychosis. So when you was going through your lowest point, how, how did that feel? It was really bad. Like, you got to the point where I just wanted to end it all. Really? It didn't matter what it was. Even at work, I'd find something to either hurt myself with or when I was at home, I just wanted to like, just end it completely. That's the low, but the high, the manic phase, I've learned can sometimes be destructive too. When I look back to, to outsiders looking at me, everyone seemed to say the same thing, that 
you was quite it wasn't manic. Right. It was, yeah, yeah, something. I mean, yeah. they, they banned Red Bull on set. I think they thought it was Red Bull at the time. Right. There was loads of Red Bull on set, and I was just drinking it down. Does that worry you at all when you're going through that stage? Of, yeah, really, yeah, it does. I once had it so badly that I honestly, and I'm the least superstitious person in the world. I thought, had I even a grain of religion in me, mm. I would have thought God was talking to me. I, I felt like Joan of Arc. I felt wow. shining, and I mean, it was weird. Mm. It was quite mm. frightening in the end. One of the things I know from my experience, and it still shocks me is the people who love me best read my mood more quickly than I can myself. Right. My husband, he, he knows when I'm manic. Mm. Mm. He hears it in my voice, he sees it in my eyes. I guess that's true. Spending time with my friends does help. My mate Femi noticed changes in me when we were working together on my first film that I'd written and directed, called Anotherhood. Like, I think it just got too much for you, one. And then two, like there were days where you were like sitting on the floor, literally yeah, on the stressed, floor. Man. I was stressed. On the floor, in, 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 in the, the middle of an yeah, yeah, estate, yeah, 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 like yeah. whilst we're filming, like just going crazy. Up. Yeah, yeah, I was stressed. And I'm just up. like, uh, so was it a combination of like, you know, winning the BAFTA, being on top of the world, and then going from that to like not getting as many acting opportunities as you thought you would get, as well as not having your family around and, yeah, yeah. and excessive cannabis consumption think, right, that though. led to like yeah, yeah, you know yeah, the yeah, state yeah. that you were in I, I or whether it like it was just like do you know what like a lot of my friends and stuff were kind of like well i think this was bound to happen man. i think looking at your life you couldn't live the way you were living for this amount of time and expect something not to go wrong and then it did go wrong i ended up in a police cell You know, I ended up having this kind of breakdown, um, but I ended up making it even more public because of Twitter. Yeah. And I was writing all this crazy stuff on Twitter w without even realising it. Like, and sometimes I just wish someone took my phone away and just, like, yes. just made me come off social I've media for a little while. I feel very much the better for it. So at the time when I saw all the craziness that was going on with you on social media, I was like, doing everything to reach out and what was going through your head? I just wanted to be left alone, man. Like, I just felt I knew what I was doing. I was paranoid, I was kind of... Got so much, I remember just blocking everyone. I literally went for my phone and I was like, block, 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 I can't talk to anyone. I got arrested again. Um, and it was actually the police that were like, look, we need to get him some help, some proper help. Next thing I know, I just remember being led down a corridor. The next thing they said to me was that, your section. I went mad. I was just like, no, 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 no. I'm getting out of here. I don't need to be here. I, I, I just wanted to get out. Paul McLaughlin was the matron on my ward. And I, I mean, I remember you when you first came to the ward. You just, you know, you were saying, "I don't want to stay in this nut house. I'm not staying here." You were, you, you, you were offering money to staff, say, let, 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 "Let me out." How much? How much to let me out the door? Yeah. Um, and I think when you came, you were very manic, doing lots of things on impulse and not totally mm. being aware of what you were doing and saying really odd things and very paranoid things. Mm. So, you know, thinking mm. that pe people outside were against you and that mm. type of stuff. I was in the hospital for three weeks. I don't know what you guys done, but. You got me better and, you know, I thank you so much for that. But how did you do it? I think it's, you know, perhaps being on a, on a safe place, like a ward for a while, having a break. I think it's talking to people. So I think it's talking to staff and mm. talking to other service users and so on and sharing your experiences or not mm. feeling you're on your own. I think it's talking to professionals, especially, you know, nursing staff, psychologists, seeing a psychiatrist. I mean, I think definitely medication plays a part. I don't think it's the be all and end all. Mm. You know, I think mm. relationships are very important. I got out and I felt a lot better. But then it made all the headlines. But now I have to deal with people recognising you, not for your work, but for the fact that you've been sectioned. Because obviously you're dealing with your own demons in the first place, you're going through hell and you know, you're all over the place and then bang, you know, it's everywhere. How, how did you cope with that? Well, I've, I've always lived my life in a strangely public way in terms of you know, being open about things. So in the 80s, when it was quite unusual, I came out as being gay and it was a similar thing in as much as 
If you're in our business, it's a lot easier to talk about your emotions. But what if you're not in the public eye? I've come across patients whose families will, you know, throw them out of the house if they've been mentally ill. Wow. They find it too hard, too much to cope with. Um, I think in terms of employment, of going, you know, if you've been off work sick and you're going back to work after maybe being in the hospital, I think it's just a huge minefield for people. Did you find it easy to, to tell your kind of friends and family about what you was going through or? No, I hid it for a good few months. Really? Yeah. Why is that? I was too scared in case of how they reacted and hurting them in the process. And you mentioned work and stuff. Mm -hmm. How did they how did they cope with it all? They didn't actually know. Okay. Um, I hid it from them for quite a yeah. long time as well because I was scared in case they thought I wasn't fit enough to work. Mm. Do you think enough is being done to kind of break that stigma and for other young people to feel no. brave enough to kind of come forward and say, you know what, I'm dealing with something right now. What do you think could be done to kind of change it? Personally, that? I don't think there's a lot going on for it. I don't think there's enough help going through because it mm. took me quite a long time to um, like open up and be honest about it. Mm. People need to be more aware and need to be more open about what's going on mm. because if it's too late, then there's nothing no one can do. Mm. If people know, then no matter what the problem is, whoever it is, they will help you. The bath just seemed like a long time ago, but now it's time to get my career back on track. Um, Thank you, bro. I'm writing music again and I've started getting acting work. Things are looking up. Listen, yo, I'm trying to hold on, but I don't know if I can make it. I know I've got to be strong, but it's long trying to deal with all the changes. If the weed set me mad, then why am I still pleased? You never know how people are going to react to you after they've heard about you being sectioned and everything you've been through. I've been really blessed that it's just been really supportive and, and people just really want to see you kind of back out there doing what you do. Um, and that's given me a lot of hope for the future. Right now, man, I'm living in the matrix. I've got to sew it all down because I had a breakdown. Most of all, I've got to face this. All I want to do is get away, but I feel so trapped. Don't know if I can take this. Yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, love that, man.